Hey, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. I am Dr. Bernita, CEO and founder of Glenn White Global Solutions, where that is the home of Empowered Educators Academy, where we are on a mission to one, raise the vibration of the education profession, two, transform the learning experience of one billion students and adults, and three, heal the nation through education. If you've been joining with me, you, um, joining in with me, you know that we're talking about 13 principles on how we treat each other. Yes, um, these are principles that I've used in classrooms, in workshops, in my personal life when um, I had to deal with situations and just principles to live by in general. Now you may, um, use them individually or together, or you may adapt a few, but these are just a foundation. Um, th this is just the foundation of some principles of how we treat each other. Not the golden rule, but just something for you to think about. Now, number five, give space for unpopular answers. Whew, especially what's happening in our world today, yeah, there are a lot of unpopular answers. And notice I didn't say wrong. I didn't say right. I said unpopular. Now, in our previous principle where, where I talked about practice asking honest and open, open questions, we have to be ready for those answers, right? And sometimes those answers may not be what we are um, expecting. When you're giving space for unpopular answers, and again, I wanna keep saying, we're not saying an answer is right or wrong. It just may be an unpopular answer to you or to me, right? This is not the time to jump in, to debate, correct someone, um, interpret what they are saying, you know, um, well, it sounds like you were saying X, Y, and Z to me, and a person's like, no, I said A, B, and C. Like, I said what I said, right? Um, we're in a space, especially in the education profession, where a lot of opinions are, are happening, a lot of things are going on. And this is one of those times where personal and professional can feel like they bump up against each other. I'll say, um, the situation I, I mentioned before where I, heard, I, I read the story, and I can't remember if it was a teacher or an administrator, but I'm going with teacher, where she placed the, in her virtual classroom the Black Lives Matter um, poster, and, and she placed a poster of um, something that represented pride or LGBTQ community or something like that, and the parents were in uproar because they felt that the teacher was pushing their, her own agenda or things like that. And yeah, you may have your opinions about both sides, but this isn't to say what to, this isn't um, to say whether you're gonna correct someone or not. This is how are you creating that space to hear what that person has to say? Um, how are you moving forward? How are you working with them? And this can be family members too. I know when the 2016 election happened, there were a lot of families that were split on um, the, the choice, but it's like, well, we still have to live together. So how are we gonna be in this space? And knowing that I know that you think a certain way, how is this going to work? For me, I'll give you an example. Um, it was about, it was in 2016, around the, the presidential elections. And I was teaching a class of about 12 um, majority white female mid to middle class students. Uh, it was a mathematics class, but we were talking about something related to, to policy, and I was telling them the importance of, one, understanding policy, understanding how the, the government impacts education, and if you really want to see change, you really have to be informed and, and vote. Now, I will say I am fortunate um, to be in higher education. We can have those open conversations. We just can't push our own agenda, but we can have those um, conversations. And I believe it's important, especially if you're in K-12, there are just certain conversations that you can open the door. And I'm being bold about saying this, and some people may disagree, but there are times where uh, children need to learn that it is okay for them to have unpopular answers and still feel valued, right? They have to learn how to do that. And being an adult, that, that can't be too late in most cases. 
but I digress back to my story. So with these students, um, we got talking to them about um, not so much the, the politics, but the importance of understanding the role that the government plays um, in education and why things are the way they are. And one of the students opened up the questions, started talking about Hillary and things like that. Now, mo those students had the Confederate flag on their fold folders, their computers on the outside, their coffee mugs. The Confederate flag was like everywhere on these students. Now, me, looking the way I look, was like, okay, what did I get myself into because that flag <laughs> has some meanings um, aside from Southern pride, if you know what I mean. But I didn't judge them as like, look, I came in, I have a job to do and I'm gonna do it. So I, and I will admit, this was one of my <laughs> assumptions. I just, I didn't know what they were thinking, but a lot of them brought up the fact that, I mean, I knew they were Republican because they said that you can see it you know they were very proud of that which hey whatever republican democrat nonpartisan independent do what you want to do but i just knew that they, because the majority of them were white all of us were female i just knew they were gonna vote for hillary that was just me i shouldn't have had that assumption so when they were talking about the fact that they just didn't like her they don't like what she stands for and all of this, and I, I will admit, I was a little baffled, like, you don't like what she stands for, and I, I may not agree with everything Hillary has done, but for the majority of what she's done, and in comparison to the other side, really, um, but I just listened, and they're like, yeah, we're, we're voting for Trump, like, all of us, like, that's what we do in our family, we've had discussions about this, and um, part of it was, if you're Republican, you have to stay Repu Republican, all of that, and I was like, wow. Now, this was like maybe three or four weeks into the semester. And although I didn't agree with them, I felt like what they were saying was unpopular for me. I still had to allow them that space and opportunity to share. I didn't ridicule them. I didn't um, scold them. I didn't treat them any differently. Um, even though some will say I did, but that was for other reasons. Like you were just not being a good student it had nothing to do with your party affiliation but anyway but yeah i had to do that because one i had about 12 13 weeks left with them right but then i wanted to to model for them as future educators and potentially future leaders you're going to be put in a situation where everyone doesn't agree with you or you're going to be in places where people may not like what you have to say or you may not not like what they have to say but how are you going to move forward? How are you going to create an environment to where we may disagree, but we still, you know, like each other, love each other and, and move forward, right? And I will say that was one of the, um, with students, that was one of the, the toughest conversations um, that, that I had. And I know a lot of debate now, um, virtual, non-virtual, going back to school in the midst of a pandemic, um what do we really talk about in our classrooms do we talk about race do we talk about gender sexuality all of that all of these discussions are coming up and it's not so much to say who's right or wrong but how are we going to create a space for all voices to be valued to still be civil in how we treat each other and then move forward and remember that our goal is to educate children and adults in a safe environment yeah, that one was tough. So let me know, um, how have you given space for, for unpopular answers? Or have you not? And you're like, oh my gosh, this one is hard for me. Yeah, I wanna know like your thoughts, if you've done this in your personal life or your professional life, or what steps are you gonna take to make sure that you are creating space for those unpopular answers? Yeah, let me know down below. All right, so I am Dr. V. Thank you so much for listening and learning with me about these 13 principles on how we treat each other, and I will see you next time. Bye.